by um, to identify the species. So that's still ongoing, but we are we are getting there. Um, I will point you towards the uh, kind of original, if you like, the, the very cool Nature paper that uh, is Ratchworthy et al. 2003 um, that really puts forward a lot of the the, the concepts behind what we're what we're trying to do here. Before I move on, any any um, any questions on on that on that case study? Yeah. Some, some, some work that I have done 
looking at predicting across different scales. So for example, we've, we've more gone the other way. We've built models at a large spatial scale, and I should be clear, clear when I say scale, I mean resolution, okay? So we've built models at, say, a 50 kilometer resolution, so the cell size is 50 kilometers, and then we've projected those models to a much finer resolution, to say, five kilometer resolution, and looked at the differences in, in, in predictions. Um, so that there's no advice for your particular case study other than to say that well, you, you can start looking at these, you know, how the predictions change. Um, one of the areas of debate and areas of interest in the field is to think, well, what are the factors that affect the distributions at different spatial resolutions? And, and when we think of scale, we need to think about resolution and extent. Okay, they're two related things. So a large extent might be the whole of Africa, and a small extent might be Madagascar. Um, and a large resolution or a coarse resolution might be 50 kilometer cells, and a fine resolution might be, you know, one kilometer cells. So there's this playoff between between um, between extent and um, resolution. So um, there is a way of thinking and, and, and a kind of test hypothesis that different factors, different environmental factors, become more important at different scales. So, for example. At a very coarse scale in Europe, taking a, a, a larger ish extent in Europe and a coarse spatial uh, uh, resolution in terms of the cell size, we find that the climate is a good predictor of distributions at that kind of scale. But then when we come back down to very fine scales, say for example looking at, at just the UK, so a smaller extent, and at a finer resolution, say five kilometers, then climate becomes less important and land cover becomes very important. Because in, in, it boils down to really just the, 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 the spatial correlation in, in, in the data. So you want to say, well, um, you know, if we're, if we're just modeling this room, then what defines whether a species is at that end of the room or that end of the room is not climate, because the climate is basically, basically the same. So in a national park, at a small scale, small extent, is climate really the driving factor? Well, it might be for a very mountainous region, but it might not be. It might be really that the driving factor at that scale is land cover change or human habitation or access to lakes or you know any any number of things. So, and a, a key thing is that when you're thinking about scale, there aren't easy answers. There aren't easy um, you know uh, you must do it like this. There is some literature that we can point you towards that's explored these things, but those are things you need to be thinking. Right. What's my extent? What's my resolution? What are the factors that drive the distribution at that scale? Um, uh, another point to make that, that's related and I think important is that um, when building these models, whatever spatial scale we're, you know, we're, we're working at, what we're trying to do to calibrate the model is characterize the niche of the species. Right? So theoretically, what we want to do is get a handle on the full range that the species can occupy. So, kind of the opposite to, to what your, your, your challenge that you have is, what we prefer to do theoretically is to take the, the global range of the species, which might seem be restricted to a small area, but the whole range of the species that tells us the most information about the niche for that species. So in effect, it's, it's giving us a better sample of the environments that the species has had access to. And then we might project to a small region. Okay, so I would have some concerns, but let's look at your particular case study, uh, taking a sub part of the range of the species, characterizing the niche, and then projecting out. Because you've not really captured the full um, range of the species, so you've not captured the full, the full niche of the species. Okay, does that help? Any other, any other questions? Thank you. I was just wondering, um, you mentioned that you use a program to predict um, like places where these species could be, um, like, you know, like thirty kilometers away. Mm -hmm. So um, that is without knowing whether that species has ever been described as being found there. Yeah, so, 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 so just to clarify, maybe if I, if I go back to, to this, this map. So the idea when I mentioned 30 
was basically to say that it's not really a model, it's just some, some code that we go through so we don't have to just do this visually to pick out these areas of the prediction. Swap hands over our right from this distance. And that 30 that I mentioned was basically saying what's this distance here? What's the, what's the minimum distance between a patch of occupied habitat and this patch of habitat that we're saying is, is you know, environmentally suitable, it's environmentally similar, but is, 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 is remote from that occupied patch. So it's simply saying, what's that, what's that distance? We, we're kind of asking for a kind of distance that's in effect beyond the dispersal capacity, and that's not ideal when we come back to discussions of N and that, but we're trying to say, you know, what's far enough away? It's just, if it's just one kilometer from a known population, well, that's not really disjunct. That's probably not going to restrict gene flow between these two populations. So this, it's not really a model, just this code that we've used. It searches through the landscape, says here's a patch of habitat. It's of a given size, so it's not just you know, a couple of cells, because we wouldn't, that's, that's not of interest. And we wouldn't trust the model at that kind of resolution, because it's too small to send the field crew to. And how far is it from a patch of habitat that, we, that is associated with a known occurrence record. Okay? And then we, we pull those areas out, so we would, we would, in effect, dump this area here. This is important for the um, much shorter case study that I'm about to show you. We're going to dump this area here, that's populated, with, it's associated with these presences, and we're just going to clip up that area. And hence, back through this 